Okay, my darling. So thank you so much for joining me today, uh, Miss Kim Poole. Um, my name is Renee Miller, and I am the founder of the Love Camp in conjunction with Ty Tours. And Miss Kim Poole, representing Ty Tours, can you please introduce yourself to me and us? Absolutely. Um, so I'm the chief visionary behind Thai Tours, and we're focused on uh, creating authentic exchanges with people of the world. Um, we're an artist base, an artist-led tour company um, that's been in operation since 2015. So we're just under a decade. Uh, certainly, we haven't done the heavy lifting, but uh, over the course of our time in operation, we've helped many people uh, just understand the importance of global learning and connection. You know, it's interesting when you say 2015, because I really think of you guys like 2010 and earlier, because the knowledge base, the expertise, the curation, the amount of countries you guys are traveling and doing work in, and just the creativity with the different ways that you introduce art into practical lives and make it part of valuable experience. I wouldn't say 2015. I would think like 2010 or even earlier. So thank you for clarifying that. So I wanted to be. Well, you know, I started really early as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of the regions where we work and do tourism are as a result of the relationships I built long before we were doing tourism. And so I began touring the world as an artist and on the festival circuit, I was able to go into stadiums full of people and I mean, just connect with people in the grass roots and the grass tops as an artist, as a performer. And my ability to conduct tours was birthed out of that network um, originally. And that did begin a lot earlier than 2015. So I'll say I did my homework by uh, going into the grassroots and grass tops as an artist first and foremost. Um, and so if it feels like some of the relationships in our company are a lot older than a decade, um, it's because they are. Yeah. And that and you feel that. I mean, you literally feel that this has been cultivation over time and it's very natural. And that's why for us, like we get excited, us as a company, we get excited about working with Thai Tours because of the expertise, because of the ability to go into communities globally and have such powerful relationships. I mean, when you travel, that's what you want. I know for me, the very first time I went to the continent, um, and wasn't work related. I remember when we went with you guys to Tanzania and it was powerful because the biggest thing that impressed me was that you were not only well connected. I mean, you know, we think of some people think of Africa as this limited place, but it's so multifaceted. All the countries have their own personalities, their own culture, their own languages, their own, their own, their own. And when I went with you guys, it was so impressive that y'all had so many connections. And we felt not only like connected because we were with you guys, but we also felt informed, exposed to different um realities, different cultures, different practices that went below the everyday you go and you do what everybody else does. You, One of the things I like about Thai Tours is you take us to see, you like, you open the curtain and we get to see a, a lot more than what you would normally see within a regular tour company. So I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about how is that your approach? Like, why do you guys do it that way? Well, I mean, like you said, opening the curtain, a lot of people that travel that are based in the U.S., they're used to going to Las Vegas. They like maybe if they're fancy, the Bahamas. And if it's really special, if that's really something that they do, they've always wanted to go to Paris for some reason. I don't know. They have good marketing campaigns, I guess. <laughs> uh, maybe Italy. Um, and so... When I guess we think about opening the curtain, it's showing them 
uh, I guess, behind the scenes because they're used to these really manicured experiences where they're not connected to the people that are offering the experiences. They know nothing about their lives. And for us as a company, we're very African centered. And so we understand that the, even the service providers themselves are actual people. They're not robots. When I, um, I went recently down to the Eastern shore and uh, our organization, we do youth curations as well. And one of our partners on the Eastern shore, they had a fundraiser. Um, and this was on High Street, and they were hosting their event inside of one of the historic mansions. We know it was the big house, right? We know what that exactly. historic <laughs> mansion really was. Right. And so it was a house built in the 1700s. So I understood that it wasn't offensive. I know the history and I know about the institution. Uh, we've emancipated ourselves and our survival is something to be celebrated. And so I get that. But when I went into the kitchen, I saw this light fixture that was being held up by little monkeys in red jackets. Mm. And it was very indicative of our subservient role. And normally I wouldn't have even mentioned it, but this wasn't a fixture that was in the house when it was originally bought. The new owner that bought the house maybe a few years ago, she added this light fixture because in her mind, it somehow embodied the spirit of the era. And so I had this conversation uh, in my social media and with some of my curators to let them know about uh, how their um, comfort and their warm and fuzzies, how they feel about us as Black people in this country in subservient roles in the South, it, it's nostalgic for them. They feel comfortable with Mama Aunt Shemima. We raised their babies. They feel so warm and safe and fuzzy inside when they see us uh, depicted in this way. And so for her, it brought back warm memories to see little monkeys holding light fixtures uh, that reminds her of this era in history that she has over romanticized. And so when I think about that paradigm and I think about our curators and Thai tours, it's important to remember that they are real human beings, our curators, that they're not your depiction of what Africa has always been as you've over romanticized what Africa is and how Africans are supposed to talk and act. When I think about Michael um, Blackston, He's a Ghanaian and he's a comedian and he's become famous imitating what an African accent sounds like. Indeed. And I think about that kind of cultural appropriation, right? And I'm not trying to get deep today, right. but when I think about him, it reminds me again of this same message that I'm trying to communicate in our dialogue that we do in Thai tours show you behind the curtain and we give you real opportunities to make real connections with the local people because they are people in 2024 on the African continent, living their lives with pursuits and dreams. And they're also a part of this experience with us. And so it helps uh, break down some of those social constructs and stereotypes mm -hmm. that we have about Africa and what Africa is and because of our lack of exposure to the continent and authentic experiences, because of our custom uh, or tradition of going into these manicured Las Vegas experiences where the staff are just staff, they're not real people with real lives. And in Bahamas, your job is to cater to me. You're not a real holistic right. person. Your job is to just be subservient. We've learned these things from being a part of European culture and in the tourism industry that we've adopted. And so a part of what we give you in Thai tours is behind the curtain. So the experience is more holistic. And so thank you for noticing that on your first tour and for being a testament that it's actually great. Once you see behind the curtain, it's not so bad back here. Yeah, <laughs> so awesome. much so that we we saw behind the curtain and we were like, we gotta come back and, and let's, do more than just come and travel with you. Let's bring another experience because I value and enjoyed and appreciated that approach. 
And so here we are looking to go again. And now we have Ty Tours Love Camp Ghana 2024, October 3rd through the 20, October 3rd through the 13th, 2024. And we want to be able to also have them have the experience, those that travel with us to peel back the curtain as well with us in Ghana. Now, Ghana is different than Tanzania. So I would love for you to give us a sense of what does peeling the curtain back look like. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how bringing love and Ghana together, how bringing the real conversations we need to have within our communities really will be a part of their experience beyond just um, going to a workshop or going to an event or sitting in the audience and listening to somebody. So we're going to talk about that in a second. But when you think about peeling the curtain back in Ghana, what is that like with Thai tours? Well, I'll say specifically as it relates to the love camp, what it looks like is having a real qualified pre-interviewed love interest that is available, that's interested in exploring your love journey with you. Um, being in Ghana, uh, you know, Africa is a continent, right? And so not every country uh, is going to have a large pool of dating uh, qualified applicants. Uh, and Because the love camp, right? When we first had this conversation, it was about building out that number, especially for Black women that may mm -hmm. not have as many options for Black love, right? Because mm -hmm. he's either married already, or maybe he's not interested in women. He's, you know, um, a homosexual, or maybe he isn't exposed or educated, and you want somebody of a certain income bracket. And I said, men in Africa are an option that <laughs> there's a larger pool waiting for you on the continent. And so one of the ways that Thai Tours is pulling back the curtain in real ways for the Love Camp journey specifically is we're vesting our time in finding candidates from Ghana that are qualified to be in conversation with you, not just as your tour provider, not just as the one that helps you carry your bags or tells you about the history of their country, but men that have the capacity to maybe change your life by joining you on your love journey beyond the tour. Men that are qualified, women that have been educated, that have been exposed, that just like you are looking to broaden their pool, their dating pool. To me, that's important. Yes, self-love matters healing from the inside out, going through the seasons of love with Renee, making sure that you yourself are ready for love, but use this as an opportunity to see and connect with real people having their real life and also looking for love on a love journey uh, across Ghana. Um, we're going to make sure that that population is available for those that participate. And we're doing our homework in advance to make sure that these people are pre-qualified. And it's because of our network that we're able to, you know, pre-screen these types of applicants that, you know, just like you are looking for love. And that's such a powerful uniqueness within itself, because where do you actually participate with an excursion or a retreat or a tour where you're not only going to learn the skills, experience the dynamic and the magnificent of a magnificence of a country in different regions, because we're also going to be flying different places. We're not staying in one area, and then also have the opportunity to again actually interact with candidates that have been pre-selected, that have been qualified, that have been interviewed for an experience, and and. We don't know of anyone is doing this. It's such a unique um, way of solving a very real problem here in our country. And it's a testament to ties towards having these relationships already and having the ability to create such a thing. Well, you know, it's also really because I show up at this table, not just as an owner operator, but also as a black woman you know, from the diaspora, looking and wanting this pool of, you know, love interest to be broader for Black women. 
And so I hear I hear these horror stories of my sisters that have, you know, been looking for love and they've read the magazine and they've seen the travel noir blogs that say, go abroad, go to Italy. Black women are in style there. Or, you know, go to Africa, find you a black man, uh, some African man. And then really what he just wants is his green card. He just wants access to the U.S. Or really what he wanted in Italy was this, uh, you know, what do we call it? Exotic. Exotic. Woman. He objectified. And mm -hmm. so I'm also committed as a black woman to helping with that screening process to make sure, you know, that the sisters and the brothers, too, because let's face it, there are a lot of brothers that are also still looking um, that when they come to this table, that they're able to connect with people that are ready for this opportunity. I love and that. so. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that is definitely unique. It's unique yeah. because um, we're unique, this partnership. And so it's it feels great to be cutting edge, right? It does. <laughs> and it kids. feels like it feels great to not only give the information that is missing in our relationships, but it also feels great to be able to give hands on to take what you're learning and implement it in real time. Take what your challenges are and implement it in real time. And I love that. And I love that we have a curriculum that addresses a lot of the issues. Because think about it. A lot of us Black women over here, if we're educated, we have a certain mindset, we have a certain experience. Like you said earlier, we're looking for a certain kind of man. And with that being said, I want to talk a little bit about like the type of men that may show up in Africa, the type of men that we're qualifying. Because I think we do have limited views of African men. We think about them being um, culturally more chauvinistic in many people's minds. Um, we hear it all the time. So let's talk, have the candid conversation, especially from your experience. What has been your experience? And, and obviously the African men are not monolithic, in all of them, but what are some of the things that Black women may experience going with us to Ghana? So let me tell you, it's all true. <laughs> Everything you just said about African men, it's all true. But there's, there's also, there's so much more to that story, right? That's only half. And I think a part of the love camp journey is knowing the other half of that story mm -hmm. um, and looking holistically at some of the benefits. Uh, when you go into, you realize that many of those uh, ethnic groups are matrilineal, meaning they revere the African woman. We think of the monolithic Africa in the diaspora. We think of Africa being, you know, one country with one culture and one nation. And that's mm -hmm. just not true. There are multiplicity of value systems. And in its core, Africa has always been matrilineal. And that is amplified in Ghana. In Ghana, you find the queen mothers in the God nation. Uh, Renee, are you still there? I am. I am. I hope we didn't lose her. Yeah, you breaking up, but let's try. Okay. You breaking so up, you but saying, let's try. So you were saying, Kim, about you breaking up, but let's try. So Kim, you were finishing your thoughts. Sure. It says that we're paused. Yeah, we're recording. Go ahead, my dear, we're recording. Kim, can you hear me? Renee, you wanna check that? It says that it's paused. 
It it is recording. Okay. okay.